Hello there, this is Mr. Van. I'm doing the Ecology EOC review for you. And let's take a look at the study of ecology here. Let's go to the first slide here. By the way, it's a beautiful picture of Bora Bora. Bora Bora, and that is uh, showing you the living and non-living parts. You've got a lot of vegetation, you've got water, you've got air, you've got solar energy, lots of minerals and nutrients, all kinds of things that are part of the ecosystem in Bora Bora. The study of ecology is looking at the relationships between the living and non-living components of an ecosystem. So all the water, the sand, the trees, everything, all, including the animals in that picture there, are all part of the ecosystem. The biotic factors are those that are living in any ecosystem. Examples of these are anything that's alive, okay? The biotic factors are also some of the things that are have died off and are the remnants of their bodies are still there, but even though they're not living, they're from biotic organisms. The abiotic factors are things like air, water, the temperature, any minerals that are in the ground, all those types of things. And of course, the solar energy is a big abiotic factor. All of the things in the or ecosystem are organized, starting with the simplest one, which is a species or an individual organism. Those organisms are part of a larger group called a population. Populations are organized into communities, which are different organisms that are all working together. The ecosystem includes the living and non-living components and how they interact. A biome is a large area of similar vegetation and animal life that is corresponding to that type of vegetation. And the largest group or level of organization is the biosphere. In each ecosystem, there's a habitat or a place where an organism lives. That organism also has a role to play in each ecosystem or each habitat, and that refers to its niche, what it does. So it would be like you having your niche as a student or work after school or an athlete. Whatever you're involved with would be your niche, your role in that particular place and time. Biodiversity refers to the variety of organisms that live in a particular area. Biodiversity is affected by a lot of different factors, but generally speaking, a ecosystem is stable when there is a lot of biodiversity. When you clear cut a forest, you reduce biodiversity and make it difficult for species to survive in those areas. Come on, advance. There you go. A keystone species is a species such as an alligator that helps maintain an ecosystem or provide the basis for the ex ecosystem to exist. Alligators are a great example of that. They make gator holes and allow species to survive. Anytime an ecosystem is not healthy, usually a keystone species, it has difficulty surviving and is an indicator of whether or not that ecosystem is uh, healthy or going up or down in stability. Energy flow in an ecosystem, it all begins with the sun. Plants convert the energy from the sun into sugars, releasing oxygen in the process, and the carbohydrates are stored. Animals eat those carbohydrates, and they are called herbivores. The herbivores are eaten by other animals called carnivores, and that's all showing you where the energy goes. It ends up coming back through decomposers, and the cycle starts again with the energy flowing from the sun. A food chain is a simple indication of the way the energy is flowing. There's different trophic levels. The, the first trophic level is called the autotrophs, also called producers. Those are the plants, then the primary consumers eat the plants. They're called herbivores. Secondary or tertiary consumers are carnivores. They are eating other animals. Omnivores can eat both plants and animals.
A food web is a more complex relationship that is produced in a diagram compared to a food chain. It all begins with the sunlight hitting the algae. The algae are eaten by the primary consumers. Primary consumers are eaten by the secondary and so forth. So this is a description of a particular ecosystem and a food web. This one happens to be a Arctic, oceanic, or aquatic food web. Energy pyramid shows the percent of uh, organisms at each level or amount of organisms at each level. There is a 10% rule that is evident in this pyramid. Only 10% of the energy moves from one level to the next. So at the very base, the producers have 100% of the energy from the sun in their body mass or biomass. By the time you hit to the primary consumers, you have lost 90% due to loss of heat to the environment and for metabolism. And each level moving on up only gets 10% of the energy transferred on. Species interact in many different ways. Over millions of years, evolution has created some very interesting relationships. And those are referred to as symbiosis, uh, relationships that exist between species. And there are several different types of symbioses. Mutualism, both species benefit. Commensal, one benefits, the other is unchanged. Parasite, one benefits, the other is harmed. And predation, one benefits, the other is killed. The carrying capacity of a population is reached when the the factors, the limiting factors in the environment are reached. So what happens is you have a rise in the population. Usually you go above what the system can carry, and then it drops or crashes, and then it stabilizes again. And when it stabilizes, that is the carrying capacity of a particular population. This is true of even humans and any other species, including plants and animals. Limiting factors are factors that cause a species to be limited by some characteristic that they need for living to survive. So for example, water, food, shelter, those are very common limiting factors. For humans, it would be temperature related, also food related, and toxins and things we get exposed to in our environment. So when a species reaches the limit of the factors that control it, it will stabilize the population or it will die out. <clears throat> Cycles of matter. Several cycles are really important the way matter moves through the ecosystem. Water cycle is probably the best known one. A little diagram of it here. The, make, the key words you need to know are evaporation. And that's indicated by letter A. And all this is dictated or determined by the, the sun's energy. So you have evaporation. You have condensation in the clouds. Precipitation when it falls and then runoff where it goes back to the ocean or to a body of water and then the cycle repeats itself. This is nature's way of purifying water as well. The carbon cycle is primarily moving through living things and they're called organic compounds that are involved in this process of the carbon cycle. The atmosphere and the soil are also very important and one of the most important things for our daily day daily life is the production of fossil fuels and the use of those fo fossil fuels they all are carbon based compounds and we utilize them extensively nitrogen cycle this is the movement of nitrogen through the environment and most of the nitrogen that's around is found in the atmosphere 78 percent of it however we don't use that nitrogen directly it's not something we, we can utilize when breathing in. So we get it through uh, different food sources. It's incorporated into amino acids and proteins, in which we find in our food. Renewable versus renewable, non-renewable resources. The renewable ones are ones that can be replaced. Solar, wind, hydroelectric. Non-renewable resources are ones that cannot be replaced quickly. Things like oil, certain minerals, and coal.
Fossil fuels refer to natural gas, oil, and coal. We utilize fossil fuels for producing all the energy that we use in our daily lives. Very important things. Also, fossil fuels are used to make many products. All the plastics and fiberglass and many other materials are made from fossil fuels. Now, there's an impact, of course, from fossil fuels, and that is it puts the carbon back up into the atmosphere in the form of CO2, which then adds to the amount in our atmosphere, and this causes the greenhouse effect, the trapping of heat by the atmosphere. Greenhouse effect has the benefit of keeping the Earth warm enough and appropriate temperature for us to survive in. So we need the greenhouse effect. We just don't need too much of it or will be like the planet Venus. So the greenhouse effect is something that is enhanced by the use of fossil fuels, putting that carbon dioxide up into the atmosphere. The word sustainability refers to using resources on the Earth to make them last. Now we know that many things run out if we use them too quickly, but there are many resources that we can use wisely and that's a sustainable practice. So sustainability is an important component of humans being able to use resources that last well into the future. Being stressed by the earth though because of exponential human population growth. This is making it very difficult to make our resources last. Ecological succession refers to gradual process of change caused by various factors like fire, tornadoes, floods, volcanic activity. This is a series of changes starting with very small organisms that usually inhabit an area first called a pioneer species and then it develops into a mature ecosystem which we'll call a climax community. It takes a fair amount of time for it to happen. The two types of succession that create the climax community are called primary and secondary. The first type involves no soil. It's like funguses and lichens and algae and little things growing on top of surfaces that are, do not have any soil. Secondary succession occurs where soil has existed and it's much quicker and easier for species to establish themselves and undergo succession. Pioneer species called a lichen is one that's really important for establishing a community of organisms. It takes a fair amount of time for these to develop and grow on surfaces, but they will if there's enough moisture and sunlight around for them. The end result of succession is a climax community, the final stable community that's formed. The climax communities are called biomes if they're in large areas, and some common biomes are called tundra, grassland, desert, and forest. They have characteristic plants and animals that live in those, and each biome is determined by the climate, which refers to the temperature and the rainfall in that particular area. This is a little description or map of the different biomes in the North America. Notice Florida has its own unique ecosystem compared to the whole eastern United States. And that concludes your ecological review. Thank you, and good luck on your test.